On today's episode, we have some combine reactions. We have some live reactions to some pretty big breaking news. And it's free agency. We're making our predictions where players are going to end up. You should join us. Leave us a comment. Let us know where you think those players are going to end up. Subscribe to this channel. Like the video. And enjoy. Foot Clan, just three days left for your chance to win an exclusive listener league spot. That's right. You can play with us. You will have the privilege of losing to each one of us in the listener league. We're giving away a spot, but only to people who pre-order the UDK before March 10th. Make sure you head over there at ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, back for March 8th. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, I'm Andy Holloway, joined as always by our fearless producers. Judge Giamatti, Al Borland in the building. hey -o. I think Owl had to poop. Oh, is he gone? Yeah, he's already he's, he's he hit record. Just, he went out. Yeah. <laughs> Owls do poop, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Gigantic. Really? Oh, yeah. Because they eat the mouse hole and then they poop out the bones. Like I a, thought it's they a, it's a spit ball. out the. I do they that, spit it out? I think they, they cough the bones. Oh, out. do they so poop out of their mouth? <laughs> is that what that means? Let's it's, start it, this over. It's again. a better way to it's a better way to poop. Mike coming in hot with the full disclosure <laughs> over here. I didn't want you to throw to him, and then it'd be a real embarrassing situation for him. <laughs> right. Owls, poop th owls poop through their mouth. Yo, oh, they, yeah, there we no, go. they do There not. we go. Half of their waist goes out their back end, and the other half is coughed out of their mouth. The, uh, okay. I mean, I mean uh, call, look, call it what you want. All I know is Google says, and I quote, owls poop through their mouth. So if it is a and if Google says it. if it's a scheduled waste removal from I your body, I am so sorry, mm -hmm, Foot Clan. I mean, you got to call that a poop, right? Absolutely, I do. Welcome to the Foot, Kyle, the, <laughs> the, the, the footballers. <laughs> Welcome to the Foot. Uh, the Borgogan is here as well, um, sitting in. I am sorry. <laughs> we have our free agency predictions on today's show. Um, very excited to report. I ran a four-two-four. 40 yard dash at the combine unofficial time when the time mm -hmm. came in afterwards it was six seconds yeah yeah but I was gonna say with with the with the hand timers that were going off for the combine you may have ran a 424 that's right that's right so it, all that matters is what makes tv not the official times the they shouldn't say that on tv <laughs> <laughs> like if the times are all going to be that far off i'm watching the combine live and i'm making kind of mental decisions based on what I'm seeing. Okay, this guy's got this speed or that, right. you know, because they're telling us. And I know they say it's unofficial. Okay, but it can't just be always wrong. Right. It needs to be closer. The this the NFL, have they've done an excellent job at creating interest year-round. Like, people often ask me, wait, you do a – you do a fantasy football podcast, and well, what do you guys talk about in March? I'm like, actually, there's a lot of things to talk owls. about. Owls. <laughs> you talk surprised. about owls You'd be in surprised. March, but and they've like, you know, they're trying, always trying to up the ante, always trying to get more cash and make things more prime time and bigger spectacles. This was a disaster. Uh, putting the combine at the time it was. Look, I like the combine a lot. But the combine is background television. It's while I'm while the workday is going on, you're just kind of listening in the background. You're checking on Twitter in case you missed a player running. Oh, what was their time at? And they decided well, this is going to be a huge thing. We're going to get primetime ratings and put it on later in the day, making all the athletes shift when their workouts, which turn into a bunch of players opting out of a ton of the things like the uh, like three cone and shuttle run and things like that. Many of the of the high profile athletes just opted out. The, they moved the bench press to the day of the forty, so most players opted out of that because they didn't want to be tired from the bench affecting their forty yard dash. And it just and then then all of that, you combine 
the reason to watch is so you get instant notifications. How fast did uh did was Brees Hall? You're like, okay. And they click, and how fast was uh, uh, Olave? And you're like, holy crap. He ran a, what, a 4-2-7? Like, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. It was closer to 4-4, man. You know, who's, who's calculating this fraction of a second? So they make it so I don't want to watch it because it's in primetime hours, and then there's no reason to watch it because the timing is so off that it's just you're getting terrible information by watching the product. Yeah, don't watch. Terrible job, oh, NFL. Move it back. One of the things I find fascinating is that you can't tell how fast a person is running. Right. Like you, you, you yeah. can't. You can't watch and be like. I mean, everybody looks fast to some degree, but if the number changes, it's the same run. You know what I mean? You, you if I am an agent, oh my goodness, what am I willing to pay to just say shave off uh, point four <laughs> off that number? Because sure. nobody can say. No, it was like, yeah, so, just, just have the numbers say I ran a little faster. It, it's funny because you're like, I'm making mental decisions with watching the combine. I think it's a good time to remind people this is pencil season. Like, that's the reality because I'm, I'm on Twitter and and I mean, it might be overstating it slightly, but legitimately, I'm not making a decision about a lot of different players until they end up on a team. And making a having a big Twitter debate about who's better than who, only to let it be completely changed later on, it's just kind of like, I know it's fun for some, yes. but, but it's also exhausting at times. And the, the exhausting part is trying to prove that you're right, because you're not right. You might be right, but they might go to a bad situation or a bad, you know, they go around later. They go to a team with an opportunity. So many things later are when the pin comes out and you can start writing down real rankings sure. that have a, a significant impact. Yeah, and if you're, if you're newer to the footballers or even to just the combine, you haven't heard us say it before, most of these metrics do not matter at all. Well, they, the, they the, matter that they do. They do have the ability to alter what an NFL team thinks of a player. Sure, they can. Which changes the draft capital. So the the metrics do matter. What I'm saying is most of the time, like the correlation between a fast 40 time and a wide receiver's success in the NFL is not a good metric to right. compare. So when someone runs a little slower or a little faster, we're, we are not changing our rankings. The only place where it really does have a, a palpable effect to me is when a – Heavy player runs extremely fast, and then if a or... <laughs> light player runs extremely slowly, there's only one player here. This yeah. like I got excited. I'm super excited about Brees Hall. Like I'm excited, and, but I already was. You should be. But there's one player who yeah, I actually yeah. did change my opinion on uh, because he was not. Is it Kyron Williams? Yeah. Yes. The, 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 there's winners and losers from the combine, but. My biggest takeaway was just sadness for Kyron Williams of your hope because he's a smaller guy out of Notre yeah, Dame. Yeah, he's going to drop his draft capital, you, which drops his chance. You were hoping that he would weigh in just a little bit heavier. Okay, we didn't get that. It's all right. Let's see how – can he Show fly? that blazing yeah, speed. fly. Fly on the 40 so you can get that speed score up. And Did he get 4-4? No. He put the parachute on. Did he get 4-4? <laughs> no, Did he, no. So four fives? No. Oh, oh man, four he's, six. Yeah, he's in the four sixes. Oh, no, he's not. His I think get, the official his didn't one get was corrected to uh, the I, four fours. Four, yeah. I think his. I think his unofficial was in the four sevens, but the official moved into the sixes. I can't recall now. Yeah. The top of yeah. Either so, way, his he's not likely to be a day two pick. Can I just? Yes, you're right. Four six five. Once yeah. a year, on reflection of the combine, I will beckon the NFL. <laughs> And, and teams to run it in pads. Every year, I just... Sure. You're going to play football in pads. Yeah. So put them on and then run the 40. And, and, and put a you football can do in their hand. You can do both. Yes. Do one with pads and a football and do one with... A, I'm just curious. Yeah. I want to know if the stronger guys, they they hold up speed-wise longer because of the pads or not. Yeah, uh, 100%. You, the absurdity of, like, you have the 40-yard the dash, so we know... We know like who's who's the fastest, and then when on Sundays when you get the uh, the next gen stats and they're like this player hit twenty miles an hour, like no they did not. I, I know they're forty times. I will it's remember impossible. Delvin Cook's terrible combine yeah. forever in how every I think play he was in like Florida four or five every play in Florida State superstar horrible combine every play 
on Minnesota Superstar. It is definitely fodder for Twitter. It is fun to talk about. So Kyron Williams. So we're still in? Are There's we still a, in? Not if he's drafted in the fifth. <laughs> but, um, yeah, just run it in pads. That's all I'm saying. And and this just in, Kyron Williams accidentally put his pads on when he ran his 40, <laughs> and that's what happened. Uh, I do have a quick question from Brooksy. I don't even know the answer to it, so you, hopefully you do, Brooks. Um, we had a tweet out there, the Browns wide receivers. Okay, listen to this. See if you can answer the trivia. Browns wide receivers last year averaged just 8.3 receptions per game as a unit. Ooh. Okay, that's the worst in the NFL. The question is what team was the second worst in terms of total wide receiver wide, uh, receptions? My guess will be Atlanta. Oh, that's not too bad. I don't know if that's right, but do you guys have a guess on fewest wide receiver receptions for a team? Yeah, I oh man. Like the Raiders are standing out to me because the, the Bears jump out a little bit too maybe. A little bit. The Raiders like I Hunter Renfro I know great, but like he was the only wide receiver it seemed like who would catch passes. Although Zay Jones kind of broke out a little bit at the end. Um what was your guess, Andy? Say that again. I think Atlanta. It's not terrible. Yeah, I mean, I I think of like the Patriots a little bit, um, but you had a stretch where Jacoby, yeah, uh, having plenty of receptions. You I have don't a know. guess? You don't have a guess? Well, All I mean, right, I, that was my guess. Um, do we have an answer, Brooksy? The answer is the Philadelphia Eagles. Mm, wow, interesting. With eight point eight yeah, receptions Goddard. per game to wide receivers. Goddard soaking up plenty of the receptions and uh, yeah, a lot I mean, of they're, running. Raygor getting people open. <laughs> right. Sure. Yeah, he, he participated in the non-reception category even when targeted. It is interesting. The, the Eagles are a team that the wide receiver position is one that they'll likely address in the draft. And it will be interesting to see what opinions are long-term on Devontae Smith uh, depending on what capital is spent on a wide receiver. So that's interesting. I did not know that. Yeah, with the amount of first-round picks they have, it would be realistic to say that they would draft a first-rounder this year. And if they do, if they draft a big-name first-round wide receiver, I think you're going to have a lot of people down on Devonta Smith. All right, uh, another reminder for you, three days left. Get the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com, the UDK or the UDK Plus. We're going to have a new update to the uh, Dynasty Pass. Right? What? Are you getting breaking news? We are. Do I need to hit the button? All right, go ahead. You hit it, Mike. This is your news. Breaking news. So Calvin Ridley, and we're recording this uh, Monday. Monday afternoon. This is rap sheet. The old fit, like we have the verified check. Falcons wide receiver Calvin Ridley has been suspended a year for gambling on NFL games during the season. Whoa. What? Yeah. Was he playing? Oh, it was, this was like, like did this he is... walk away and then he gambles? Like it, it... <laughs> what? Full release five seconds ago from Ian Rappaport. Suspended at least the 2022 season for betting on NFL games in the 2021 season. There is nothing more fundamental to the NFL's success. This is a quote from Commissioner Goodell. Huh. And to the reputation of everyone associated with our league, then upholding the integrity of the game. It's the responsibility of every player, coach, etc. Your actions put the integrity of the game at risk, threaten to damage public confidence and professional football, and potentially undermine the reputations of your fellow players through the NFL. Wow. I I need to know. This was like was he betting on the Falcons to win? What what I'm curious about is, was this pre or post walking away? Pelissero clarified after he left the team last season. He had he had time on his hands. Okay. And he probably got hit with one of the 5,000 ads for uh, some sports betting. And See, that that's not that bad to me. Am I am I wrong there? Like, if it's he not, walked away. He's not playing football. He's not playing in these games. Right. He's not even at practice. He's not at practice. He's not, he's not part of the NFL at that moment. I mean, he, he right, is, right. but... Like at that point, if you bet on the Super Bowl or whatever, is it really that bad? Dang. Didn't he just tweet football is life? Yes, that's yes. we. He was going to be talked about in the news section. That's shocking and inevitable. I think for these things to happen, yeah, it comes part and parcel with legalized sports betting. But oh my gosh, 
Wow. Okay. Well, if you well, have that... pending trade offers out there, yes. cancel them. I mean, if you're the NFL, that's how you nip it in the butt. You yeah. try to. You're yeah. just right here. Calvin Ridley is a – Your career could be over. He, yes. Is, this is a top-tier player, and he's suspended. So if you're a nobody, don't even think about it. He may petition for reinstatement on or after February 15th, 2023. What's What day is the Super Bowl? Probably February. He might want to get Fort- in that action. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's wild. Absolutely yeah, crazy. It is. Wow. Um, good. Oh, gosh. Good I, luck, Calvin. I think I was telling people that they had a few days left to get into the ultimate draft kit and win a listener league. Sorry. Spot. I, but, I, I, but that I, news was, you, was significant. You were talking about the Dynasty okay. Pass. We are about to have another big update to the yeah, Dynasty post Pass. Com- combine. Post yes. Combine. So, in the next couple of days, we will. Uh, have that rolling out, and in the next couple of days is your last chance to get in on. If if you get the pre order right now at the cheapest price, you have a chance to play with us in the listener league. We're giving out a spot to someone who uh, gets the ultimate draft kit before uh, what is it, March tenth? March tenth. So it uh, three days left, and uh, you know you're going to get it. So get it now and get yourself entered to win at ultimatedraftkit.com. More news. News and notes from around the league. Where are the where are the Falcons picking? Is it eighth? Kyle just ninth, me. eighth, eighth. Yeah. Okay. So breaking news: uh, confirmed wide receiver being drafted at number eight overall by the Atlanta Falcons. Either that or they don't, they don't have a choice. I mean, well, we're we're about to do free agent predictions on mm-hmm. today's show and. Might need to adjust. All right. Here, I I mean, you check the gauge over there in Atlanta. Ah, no wide receivers. No. They need somebody to help Kyle Pitts be Kyle Pitts. Woof. Zero, right. zilch, no wide receivers on the current depth chart. Is Russell Gage is a free agent too? Yeah. Okay. So they literally have <laughs> oh, no one. Oh, brother. Kyle Pitts is looking around. The, he's the scene from uh, Fresh Fresh Prince. Prince? Walking in the the like receiver room. Uh, uh oh man. I guess he's a wait. Can we extrapolate some stats on target share here for Kyle Pitts? Seventy five percent target <laughs> share. Four hundred and forty eight targets this year. That and they they have cap problems, so free agency is. Yeah, you're right. You might as well just the draft is it. Yep. First four picks off the board. Cool. Um. Man, they, when you don't even have Zacchaeus coming back, you know that you are in trouble. Uh, we talked about the combine. Uh, we got a franchise tag. Uh, bit of news this morning uh, on Monday. David and Joku franchise tagged by the Browns. Yes, so ten point eight million for twenty twenty two. Austin Hooper's paid thirteen million. They are um, all in on the tight end. It is an interesting decision by them, uh, David and Joku. Like, I believe the stat was one time he hit above the 75% threshold for snaps in a, in a game. Like, it's that's a, a, it's not, and it's not that he's, like, he can be important to the team and not put up stats, like the fantasy stats that we want. It's just so bizarre that a player who's not even, a like, a full, full-time player, you're going to commit this much money to him. I don't know, it's. It's strange to me. Would you feel strange if the uh, <clears throat> New York Football Giants franchise tagged Evan Ingram? I would yeah, be. I would. Yes. It's very. I mean, it's amazing for them to come out in the same draft class, right? Yeah, yes. and OJ yeah. Howard as well. And to have the similarities, because I don't think any of us would argue that the athletic single playability of Evan Ingram or David Njoku is there. We've seen it. Correct. They can take both are tight ends that can take a seam route to the house, and are extremely great athletes. Yet, at least from my observations, have been very inconsistent. Yeah, I mean, Engram had a like one of the best rookie seasons for receiving wise for a tight end of all time. Like he had a. It is shocking that he put that up his his rookie year, and then has just been Thanos snapped into oblivion. Uh, big news that broke over the weekend. ESPN's Adam Schefter reporting the Cowboys likely to release Amari Cooper. This is consistent with other Oof. reports. They are Oof. also close to re-signing Michael Gallup. That's just a slap across the <laughs> face. 
It's I, a business decision. Yeah, it's a business decision, but it's it's also a football decision, right? You're gonna pay. I mean, maybe you pay Gallup less than you were playing paying Amari Cooper. But I think that's what it says. You're not. You're also choosing like that is. A little bit of savings on Michael Gallup is more valuable to your team than Amari Cooper. So it's surprising, but they were I mean, 20 million. It's not just that, though, because Blake Jarwin, uh, he had a surgery on his hip, and the type of surgery that it is, they're saying it, it would be shocking if he is available to start the season. And they did not have room to bring back Dalton Schultz. Even franchise tagging Dalton Schultz was going to put them in a, uh, a tight situation. So this is I I feel like it's a little bit of a twofer that you're gonna take the the the, the cut for Amari Cooper, bring back Gallup because he won't command nearly as much money as Amari Cooper, clearing a little bit of space for you to tag Dalton Schultz which, or maybe even a long term deal, which we now know would be if they franchise tag him ten point eight. Is that what it is? I mean, yeah, I yeah. imagine if that's what Njoku was tagged for, but was the writing on the wall a little bit last year? Amari Cooper, sixty eight for eight sixty five. Had the eight touchdowns, which in fantasy might have masked it, but just a 68% snap percentage. It's the first time in his career he's been under 70%. And in Dallas, that was a big dip. So. Uh, it's it's surprising to me still. Yeah. He I mean, is we, 27 years old, so we'll talk about him in a little bit as a free agent, assuming that he will be. Um, I think he is probably the best free agent that won't be franchise tagged. Uh, probably, yeah. Odell Beckham, expected to be ready and able to play by the beginning of November. Okay. So. That not, is not when the season starts. No, it's not. <laughs> and the, the Rams do want to re-sign him, but and another he, battle back. Yeah, he's talked about, uh, this was prior to the ACL injury that he is willing to take, a hometown discount, if you will, to stay with the Rams. The Rams, after the ACL, are saying they want him back. So that seems like the obvious destination. Baby hands, Jack Doyle riding off into the sunset, retiring from the NFL. And Congratulations, Mr. Doyle. I know he was it him and T.Y. Hilton talking about walking off together, but then Hilton wants to play now. I there were some know. discussions at the end of the year between a couple of the Colts that might have wanted to walk away together. This was all because of Kenny Pickett's hand size, and there can only <laughs> be one, a real Highlander situation, but on yes. the but I mean, like, micro hands. Doyle. Just the career that he put up from undrafted to like make it a good chunk of change, sure, and lasting that long, like congratulations, Mister Doyle, gets to walk away. Yep, and uh, COVID protocols are done. All right, give me a COVID protocol free fantasy football season. You're gonna get it. All right. Anything else, Brooksy? Any other news? Now nah, we're watching. No. We are a, like I said, we're recording this the afternoon, Monday, March 7th for the Tuesday show. It's possible that some news breaks between now and then. There's franchise tag deadlines tomorrow, or I guess when you're listening to this, this afternoon at 4 o'clock. So. I did see an update um, on the Ridley situation just saying that the Falcons were made aware of this less than a month ago. So this is new information to that franchise um, as well. I thought you might tell me how much he had won, but <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Free agent frenzy. All right, Jason, you want to walk through some of these vocabulary terms people should be aware with of over the next uh, few weeks? Yeah, we have sure. free agency on the horizon. Yeah, you, you've got unrestricted free agents, which is a free agent. That's just what you'd expect it to be. Restricted free agent means a player can sign an offer sheet with any team, but then his 2021 team can keep him on the roster by signing him to a restricted tender. Um, an exclusive rights free agent? It's trash. That, that means they are not a free agent. So that's the way that I've always seen it. it. Because it's, that's the truth. Right. It means a player's going to – if a team doesn't want him – they can let him go, but if they want him, they just they get to keep him. Um, and then obviously, uh, you know, talking about cap, the cap hit is how much, um, you know, uh, not how much he's paid, but how much that's going to affect the salary cap that year. And dead money, if we talk about that, is money owed to players who aren't even on the team anymore. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of teams still paying for uh, old players. So today, 4 p.m. Eastern, franchise tag deadline. Monday the 14th is the 
what they now call the legal tampering period where teams can, this is where they can enter a contract negotiations, announce inevitable signings. And so then tampering, le tampering. Okay. Legal for the, the gambling. Oh, level. come on. There's a difference. Now you can't bet on which players go <laughs> to which teams. What's funny is that, that to me always says that free agency opens on Monday, the 14th. Well, Frank Gore has begs to differ. Sure, but I there mean, are situations where the reports are wrong. Well, the reports are usually wrong. The reports are just pulled back. The player changes his mind. Like with Frank Gore, he was going. Well, then, I'm just saying. Then the reports can be wrong. Yeah, They're, they can. Frank Gore has did not play on was it the Eagles. Yes. So, uh, but a lot of news is going to break on the 14th, and then the official league year begins on the 16th of March. Before we get into our predictions at each position, teams with most cap space, the Dolphins, $61 million, the Chargers, $57 million, Jacksonville, 56 Bengals, 48 Jets, 44 So what is that? Tua, Herbert, Lawrence, Burrow, and who was the last Wilson. one? Zach Wilson. So you got them. Discounted quarterback period of time for these teams. At the quarterback position, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is still a 49er but it's likely he will move on. The team is likely to trade him. And really, that is the big name in potential trade moves in terms of making a huge impact. So we do have Jameis Winston. that could He could return to the Saints or be given a job. We have Mitchell Trubisky, who played behind Josh Allen in Buffalo and seems like one of the targets this offseason as a free agent. Yeah, he's a he's a hot topic right now at the Combine. A lot of people were talking about uh, there's going to be a market for Mitchell Trubisky, and we expect him to be a starter in 2022. He's taken a team to the playoffs two times, and we can mock him um, like professionals, uh, which we do, but he is better than the worst quarterbacks playing football right now. So let's start with our predictions on where Jim, Jimmy Garoppolo, Jimmy G, ends up. I went with Tampa Bay. I think it's a a good fit there. You know, it's, it'll be a little bit interesting with the fact that he was behind Tom Brady in New England, could come in and operate a functional offense with some good weapons in Tampa Bay and maybe renew optimism. This team, you listen to the GM talk about it, it's a win-now team. They need to bring somebody in that's not going to be a developmental project. And I know that they're going to kick the tires on the Russell Wilsons and things like that, but I think Jimmy G is the most realistic target. I've, I haven't gone to Tampa as well. It will be, if that does in fact happen, it will be very interesting to see how Garoppolo handles the first year in the Bruce Arian system, which yeah. gen generally speaking quarterbacks, the first year in the Arian system, they throw a lot of interceptions and be because the whole, the system is designed to let's get down the field, which not, and it's not that Garoppolo can't, he has just kind of shown he he prefers not to do that. He likes the guys real close. Yeah, and he and he's not one to never turn the ball over either. He's he, he likes throwing picks from time to time. Thirty three and fourteen as a starter in his career. Yeah, he has had good teams around him. So um, I <laughs> um, I've got him going to to the Denver Broncos. I I think that the Denver Broncos are still a realistic team in the Aaron Rodgers hunt. Um, a lot of people are saying that the uh, you know biggest non secret at the combine was that Aaron Rodgers is going to go back to the Packers. I I do think that the Broncos is where he would go if he leaves. Assuming they do not get him, they are a team that is not wanting to stand still at quarterback. I think they will go out and make a move, and Jimmy G would be the next best get. For fantasy, wherever Jimmy Garoppolo goes, I will be out on that wide receiver core. Obviously, Debo was great this last Terry, year. He had, even Tampa? He, yeah, because I, I don't think that Jimmy G will support like I, I, you know, I look at all of the, um, you know, the last couple of years of the mediocre quarterback changes. They just don't, they just don't, you know, make value that for the wide receiver core. That was one of my things to remember. So I, I will be more out. Um, obviously Debo had a great season, but that was, that was Debo. That was just him on being untackleable. Yeah, I mean, I would feel better about Godwin than I would Mike Evans if he went to Tampa. And I, the short area 
capabilities there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. I would I would be happier with Evans and Godwin's value with Garoppolo than with Kyle Trask. Um but I, <laughs> right. I but certainly not to the level of uh, Brady. They would, they would take a, a major step backwards. They will no matter what. What about Jameis Winston? I I'm the only person that doesn't think he will get a starting job in this room. So I think he'll be the backup in San Francisco. I think that that is where he could go. Gives them the option to pivot if they have to due to injury, um, get a veteran in the locker room, somebody by beside Trey Lance. Yeah, I guess getting a veteran backup could be there for Lance. I, I wonder if once once Garoppolo's gone, if they want that or if they just want you know the the hand kind of forced. But I've, I've got him returning to the Saints. They've cleared a bunch of cap space recently. They don't have a good quarterback on the roster, so – uh, I think Winston goes back uh, to New Orleans. I think they can get him back in the Saints for, in in quarterback terms, not a ton of money, and this they're going to be rebuilding. So I've I've got Jameis going back. So getting him back slash wanting him back. They yes. you think they want him to be the quarterback? Um, <laughs> more more Ridley news just breaking every two seconds. Played parlays on his cell phone. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it's difficult because I know that it's going to be letter of the law for every player. But you talk about every – this is one of the weird – it's not a player that even tore an ACL and was out for the year and is at the games. It wasn't yeah. even around. It, it is, is It is a really good message to send to the rest of the It is because he has access to, right? NFL players have access to things that the public doesn't have access to, so – you know, you're going to know what's going on in locker rooms. You're going to know what's going on with injury reports. And you just got to draw that line firm. Uh, Mitchell Trubisky, I'm going with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think that's where he's going to end up. Okay. And uh, if you want to make Mitch Trubisky look great, stack him up next to Dwayne Haskins. Stack him up next to <laughs> Mason Rudolph. And Mitchell looks like a a Greek god. Yeah, I I, uh, I would like that. Um, I, I think he would thrive there. I've got him going to the Colts, though. Um, they're trying to get rid of Carson Wentz. They don't like him, and I think <laughs> Mitchell Trubisky <laughs> Thank would, you, would be. Yes, uh, I think he would be quite an upgrade. Th this is a team that needs a couple more pieces on offense, right? Jonathan Taylor's great. Pittman looks like he could be something, and then it's not in this cricket. T.Y. Hilton is done. Pascal's, uh, you know, a, a, a Ashton Doolin. Yeah, yeah, I like him. I mean, you you got some threes here, but they need a couple more pieces, and I think Trubisky is one of them. If yeah. you real quick before we no, leave that team, because if if he goes to the Colts, I can't find my like. How do you react? Goes to Pittsburgh, Deontay. You go to the Colts, Michael Pittman. I can't imagine either of those is going to be like unmitigated excitement for those options. No, not at all. I think um, under those situations, you are hesitant to draft either of those. Uh, wide receivers with any kind of heavy, heavy value. Really? I would be, yeah. I mean, like, there's Trubisky coming in can't be – if if somehow he's worse than Carson Wentz, uh, which I, I can't imagine he He'll is. He'll probably be worse than Carson Wentz. I don't think he Carson will. Carson Wentz be. on the field, I think the reason that they don't want Carson Wentz around has a lot to do with more than just the play. Maybe. I mean, he had he did a lot of stupid things this year, and Big Ben was a Big uh, Ben was terrible. Yes, so I mean, I, I think that Trubisky going to both of those places doesn't change my outlook. I, I'll put it that way: of like, if you were cool with Deontay Johnson in the fourth or the fifth round, wherever it was with Big Ben, Mitchell Trubisky, and he's there, I would be cool with that. Never thrown for more than thirty two hundred yards in a season. Sure, and Wentz gave him thirty five hundred last year, missing some time too. I don't know. I just there's a lot of unproved. I think people are optimistic because just the reset, right? Then then no longer with the Bears, high draft capital, with a good organization for a year. I don't know. And I have I have him going to the Broncos. Trubisky of these guys is the most interesting because he's it's draft capital is out of the way. Like you don't have to worry about does someone have a high enough pick to get the the quarterback. And, like, all three of those locations, Steelers, Colts, Broncos, all really need a solution at the quarterback position. I don't know if Trubisky can be that, but, I mean, I even heard uh, on uh, Eisen today, Rich Eisen's show, that 
he's out there saying he, he is hearing the same exact thing of Trubisky is going to get a solid contract and he's going to be a starter. He's just, just to let everybody know, he's not going to be the answer that anyone is looking <laughs> We're for. We're double, double down? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's he's a better option than the other guys that uh, at those three teams that we just mentioned, uh, Wentz, assuming he's gone. Um, but he's not the answer. Sam Darnold or uh, Mitchell Trubisky? Trubisky. Okay. Running backs, can we move on? Can we talk sure. about some exciting running back situations if they are out there? Chris Carson is a potential cut candidate. He's only got one year left with Seattle. I think they said he's going to be back. They seem to be talking that way. Things could change with Rashad Penny's situation. Jamal Williams arrives in Detroit last year. If they cut him, it's cheap to cut him. He's only 26, though. I'd be surprised. Yeah, I'll bet I bet they, they keep they him. They like the guy. Everyone likes him. But Carlos Hyde, he's awesome. Carlos Hyde seems more... I can't believe Carlos Hyde got a two-year contract. <laughs> like, how is that possible? Uh, Urban. <laughs> you have some uh, restricted, exclusive rights, free agents, Boston Scott, Dearness Johnson's a – is he restricted? Boston? No, Dearness. Yes. Yes. I, I believe he is restricted. Is that – do I got to have a nod back there? I but the know. thing for Dearness Johnson of is like – are they really going to pay him while you're paying Kareem Hunt and paying Nick Chubb? Right. So if he's restricted, they can tender him at a different level, right? And pay yeah. him that level. Yeah. Well, yeah. They could say they could give a second round tender to him, and then a team, if they sign him, they would have to relinquish a second round pick as well. Which no one's going to do. No. No one's going to do that for DeAndre. If they, I don't think if they, they will. lower the price. The yeah, exactly. I don't think they'll put a second round tender on him. All right, uh, unrestricted free agents. Leonard Fournette is one of the big ones. 27 years old. He was the RB3 in fantasy from weeks 4 to 15. So it's still hard for me to shake my perceptions of what he was <laughs> heading into the signing in Tampa Bay, but he proved that he – I think what he proved, and there there aren't – not every running back can do it, but he can, ha he can have control of a, a, a backfield. Yeah. As in, like, he can walk in and be your guy for the whole year and sustain a large workload, catch the ball out of the backfield. That's Miami to me. I think he goes into Miami and just, you know, he's the he's the running back for the Miami Dolphins. That's a, that's a great spot. Um, they have the money for him, and I think with Brady gone, he's not necessarily chasing a championship. He is He's going to go wherever someone can pay him. Um, and I think it makes sense for both parties there. The only issue I have is, you know, and, and maybe this is not real, but I project with that whole system, the Shanahan running system, um, that now that McDaniel is there, that they really want to speed. Speed, speed yeah. Um, and, and so I've got Leonard Fournette going to the Jets. I think his pass protection, his veteran presence would help uh, Zach Wilson get get him someone that can um, – give him a little bit more time in the pocket and an outlet. I know that they've obviously got Michael Carter, but Michael Carter's not going to, you know, move the needle. And, and I think Leonard Fournette can help the Jets sell a few tickets. And I don't know how they pay for him, but I have the Buffalo Bills make it a run at Leonard Fournette. Uh, feeling the need to shore up the running back room and, you know, just making making a lot of fantasy players sad if Fournette goes there, but. I think he ends up there. If Fournette went to Miami, he would be a really great fantasy option, I think. I agree. Yeah, I He agree. would be – he'll be dangerous in the draft because his ADP will skyrocket. And I – oh, man. Where, like, where, where do you think he would end up? Do you think he jumps all the way to the third round? Yeah, I think he'd be in the third. He's proven that he can provide fantasy value in bad has, situations yeah. for, or ones that you don't expect him to especially in the passing game. James Conner. James Conner's 26 years old only, somehow. Uh, Arizona last year, all the touchdowns, 18 of them. Whew. Second most goal line carries in the NFL. Uh, you guys go first. I, I, I've got him returning to Arizona. I think it worked well for him. Uh, he likes the team. The team likes him. If they can make the money work, uh, I think he'll be back. I do too. I went with Tampa Bay. I went as the Fournette replacement, James Conner okay. coming in there, somebody that I think Bruce Arians can trust in the backfield, does the little things right, 
Need another big personality in the locker room with Tom Brady gone. Melvin Gordon. Well, I have him going to Arizona to replace James <laughs> Conner there. So I'm not sure he gets more than a one-year deal this this free, uh, free agent period. So maybe he can go back to Denver because of that. But I went with Arizona to take a shot at someone else. Yeah, I think he's getting a one-year deal or one of those two-year deals that are really a one-year deal. The Carlos Hyde. They call um, it. Yeah, I'm, I, I've got him going to Atlanta. We talked about they have nobody to catch the ball. Melvin, Melvin Gordon is a great uh, receiving back. They obviously proved such success last year with the free agent kind of running back in Cordero Patterson. So I think it would be good for Melvin Gordon. I think he would also be very good for fantasy in Atlanta uh, just from a – need standpoint reminds me of steven jackson leaving the rams for the twilight of his career and having some decent years in atlanta yeah and i have the sadness that is the rejoining of melvante mm, in, don't do it. in denver that's what's gonna happen too i did we that's decide why that's i a, said is that, that a pasta sauce melvante mm, delicious mm. <laughs> uh so, <laughs> i i the the way that they're talk the team is talking about him i think he'll be back and you don't expect Melvin Gordon to really have like a crazy market. You know what I mean? And if there's not someone That's wanting to go scoop him up and pay him to be the guy, like I'm hoping Atlanta does that, but they could just grab someone in the draft too, then yeah, he, he'll be back with the How are the they going to draft a running back when all their first four picks have to be wide receivers? That's a good point. Melvin Gordon touchdown since his rookie season, 12, 12, 14, 9, 10, 10. It's a lot of touchdowns. Rashad Penny is our last free agent prediction at the running back spot. I went with Atlanta. I think they are in a position to take that shot on Rashad Penny and maybe steal him from Seattle. Yeah, even though I don't think the Seahawks are going to go into a bidding war, I believe. Uh, is that because it's been reported? Dan Graziano said that from ESPN. Um, I, I don't think there will be a bidding war for Rashad Penny. I don't think that his we fantasy football players oh man in the in the fantasy playoffs he was a hero and he proved how great he could be but I don't think that like three week stretch to the NFL is like oh I've got to go get this guy so I, I think he returns and Seattle does want him back they don't want to pay out the nose but they want him back you don't think the NFL likes his 2800 yard pace over those last three weeks <laughs> I think they don't care about that. Just imagine if there were more games. He went 135, 170, 190. It would have been 210, 230. Mike, where do you got him going? Uh, I'm trying to think. We got more Calvin Ridley stuff coming Come on. Up. Oh, let's have it. Wait, what? Is, Kyle, is that an official account? That can't be true. That's his real account? Calvin Ridley has tweeted out. Yeah, it is. From his official account, his tweet said, I bet 1,500 total. I don't have a gambling problem. Yeah, so uh, this is I, – I read, I read that wrong at first. I read that he is betting that he doesn't have oh, a gambling problem. Cool. Like, uh, but, yes, yeah, so – I think this is just like the dude was – Oh, so he bet $1,500. Yeah. That's what he's saying. Because yeah. people are like, well, why are you – you're a multimillionaire. Why are you betting? I I think the guy honestly just didn't think about it. Yeah. He's like, oh, cool. Like, I'm not playing. Why not have – why not put a little bet here down this game? The NFL and statement says the investigation uncovered no evidence that any inside information was used or that any game was compromised in any way. He also did not bet on anything involving the Falcons. I think he just pulled out his phone and was like, oh, I want to throw some money down. I'll throw 1500 hey, down on man. this game. And then didn't realize. Slippery, slippery. Yeah. That, that is, that is a no, that's no. That's a big no-no. Uh, I was trying to think a little bit outside the box here for Rashad Penny. And oh, they did involve the Falcons. Let me correct myself. Oh, they there. did. They did involve the Falcons. Yeah. So wait, is he betting for them to win? Hmm. Well, that'd be a bad bet. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> All right, uh, Mike uh, Rashad Penny, Houston, the Houston Texans. <laughs> he said that two different ways. Yes. Houston. Uh, uh, congrats like, to Rashad Penny on the Houston contract. I mean they. They need uh, they need the running back position to be filled out. It's just sexy Rexy uh, of note. And for this team with Lovey Smith, I mean, go trying to go old school. Why not? I, I bet you can get Rashad Penny to to be a feature back, not paid like a feature back. Let's jump into the wideouts. We talked about Amari Cooper, so we're gonna we're gonna throw him in the if he's cut, where will he go category for predictions. Also, you could see Jarvis Landry and Cole Beasley depart their teams. Not going to make predictions on them today because those seem 
not as close to happening as the Cooper one. But let's jump in here. Let's start with two names that we are unanimous about and get them out of the way. Devontae Adams. Green 20, Bay. 29 years old. We all have going back to Green Bay. Odell Beckham Jr., 29 years old. We just talked about him not being back until November, but we all have him going back to the Rams. Mm -hmm. And Mike Williams. Uh, they have come out and basically said it's being reported that if they can't reach a long-term deal, they will franchise him. So we all have him going back to ah, the Chargers. That's true. I did not know that. We all had the same there. So we also got a report that Chris Godwin's going to be franchise tagged, 90% chance at least. So we're not going to predict his destination. I predict Tampa Bay. Tampa. Yeah. But we'll move on to the second tier and some interesting names like Amari Cooper. But, well, let's start there. Let's go Amari Cooper. If he departs, where does he go? I've got him going to the Colts. Uh, I think he is a good wide receiver with a lot left to give. And like I said, the Colts need a couple of pieces. So I've got them grabbing Trubisky and Amari Cooper in the uh, open market. I'll go with the Bears. It seems like a perfect pairing of a reliable trusted number one outside wide receiver in Justin Fields and they'll have the money to well they need to they need to equip Justin Fields I'll he put could, it that I'll put it that way he could be there Allen Robinson <laughs> right <laughs> all right and I've got Amari Cooper going to Miami going home to Miami to a team that is on the rise and has a boatload of cap space. There you go. To pay the man. So I think he ends Welcome. up. I like that Miami. one. I think he's a dolphin. What about Allen Robinson? Oh, I have him going to Miami. <laughs> <laughs> so that's. They're going to get somebody. You look at the cap space for yes. Miami and they're going to overpay for somebody. Yes. Um, I've got him going in division to the Lions. The Lions have seen Allen Robinson be great for several years. They have plenty of money. They need wide receivers, and I think Allen Robinson wants to play against the Bears. I can't imagine he's happy with them after this last year. If he's got juice left, uh, he would want to uh, squeeze it out on to the Bears. Uh, <laughs> Whoa, okay. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking. Hey, juice. What? Juice what is worth just a squeeze. happened? Squeeze, squeeze it out on the Bears, eh? Yeah, that's right. Oh, I stand yeah. by it. That's what they say. Mm-hmm. I see Al is back. Oh, no. Oh, how was your poop? <laughs> it was good. Yeah, all right, Thank good. you for asking. Yeah. Mouth? What, did, did, it, mouth. <laughs> did it come out your mouth? We we learned that owls <laughs> poop through their mouth. Uh, I was really confused by yeah. that question. Yeah, it was talked about why you were pooping. <laughs> out of my mouth. Yeah, yes. see? Yes. I this knew has it. been a show. Um, are you so, enjoying yourself, Brooksy? Well, yeah, of course. It's always a good time with the fantasy footballers. So for Allen Robinson, uh, there's a team. They have uh, they have a type. Yeah, they have a type. Look, they've got a, a spot here for an old, washed-up wide receiver. If the spot is going to become available, so why not replace AJ Green with? And I'm not saying Robinson's washed. I don't know. Could be. I don't. He could be. I don't want him to be. Do you think he is? I. Yeah. I mean, it's. It's hard to not lean I on the think, S side. I, I think he is. It's hard to not see what happened last year and think that's, that he has fallen off. So, anyways, I believe he ends up uh, with the Arizona Cardinals to fill the shoes, the gigantic shoes of A.J. Green and for that offense. the shoes of Christian Kirk because Kirk is yes. likely to leave as well. Uh, yep. And uh, so, originally I had Christian Kirk being that target for the Bears – I will pivot that over to the Raiders. I think the Raiders need another target, mm, okay. and so uh, that's where I'll go. Yeah, Christian Kirk is a solid wide receiver. I think he'll be one of those guys that changes teams and makes an impact because he's not trying to come over to be a superstar. Um, I think the Falcons, obviously, we've talked about the need. they got no money, though. Uh, every team has money. Every team can make it work. They always do. It's not like the Falcons aren't going to sign any players in the offseason season. And I think uh, they desperately need a wide receiver. Christian Kirk is not going to break the bank in free agency. The Bills also have no money, but they're going to get Christian Kirk. I've seen that linked a little bit too many times for me to not buy in. That could be a good fit. That's a downfield target for... Yes. They've been, it, they've it, been doing the replacement of the, uh, what is it, John Brown, then Emmanuel Sanders. Christian, Christian Kirk would be a spectacular signing for that team. I do agree that that team will add some wide receiver help for sure. Juju Smith-Schuster, 
my highest free agent conviction is Juju to the Jets. Of all, oh, of you're all, all predictions. in on this, I ju it just makes too much sense. Yeah, I mean, he'll be love so, being in New York. It'd be great for his gaming channel, his gaming brand, it's to be in the Twitch. To be in New York, the uh, the Big Apple. I, I've got him going to the Bills. So the, the Bills need that wide receiver. Um, and uh, Juju. All right. And I had, I guess I had a similar thought to Andy of let's let's see, bad team, lots of money That's to it. spend on a wide receiver, wide receiver who wants to go make lots of money. I'm going with the Jacksonville Jaguars. That makes a lot of sense. Get Trevor Lawrence. Uh, they need to a big name. They need to load up. So I. I think it would be a good move to go get Juju. You t you tell me my very enviable Marvin Jones dynasty <laughs> share is in jeopardy, Mike. It I, it could be. It could be. I was planning on having at least two games next year that I might consider playing him. Uh, tight ends, and we'll be reporting on all the free agent signings and talking through what happens. I mean, because there's an, a number of other wide receivers. You know, DJ Chark, Will Fuller. Um, the Gallup contract, Jacoby, I think, is a restricted free agent. Uh, Alan Lazard's a restricted free agent as well, and there are a bunch of other names that that will land. Who knows? AJ Green may AJ land. AJ Green's somewhere. a free agent. But at the tight end position, I'm just going to have us predict a couple names before we close things down. Mike Gasicki. I think he'll get tagged. So I'm going Miami. Yeah, they got the money. I think he's going back Miami. I'm not sure he's the blocker McDaniel wants. I've got him go to the Chargers uh, with Jared Cook retiring, get a athletic pass catching option for Herbert. All right, and then the Zach Ertz uh, experiment. Is it going back to Arizona? That's what I have. I think he comes back there. I think the team loved him, and I think he will come back for another season. They definitely loved him. I've got him going to the Jaguars. A lot of money. Need to get some receiving options there, and they use the tight end. And I got him ending up in New York as a Giants, as they have just said goodbye to Kyle Rudolph. Evan Ingram is certainly not going to be signed back there, and they need some pass catching uh, options there. I uh, there's all Brooks made me laugh because he said, "Did Jason just retire to Jared Cook for him?" Like Jared Cook <laughs> hasn't actually retired. Uh, did I say he retired or just he's gone? I thought you said retired just like i mean either like way he already has you, oh, hold on you're presuming it hold on if i didn't let me clarify jared <laughs> cook is retired <laughs> that he, jared cook will be retired who will retire first jared cook or jimmy green jared cook do you want to make a jimmy graham prediction oh for 100, let's for a hundred dollars yes i predict that jimmy graham will play in the nfl longer than jared cook yeah i do too Okay. Uh, Gronk could get signed someplace if he wants to keep playing. There's some. He's going to get signed by a bunch of companies to make commercials. Bad, that, bad commercials. When you're in the NFL, they want you for commercials. Yeah, I, I think he's done. You think Dalton Schultz is back to yes, Chicago as well, or back to Dallas? What did I say? Chicago. Yeah, that's, that's the end of the like, show. Who cares? But we will. Oh, busted! It's Super Bowl champion Rob Gronkowski. <laughs> Are you doing the commercial? <laughs> yeah. I it's that one has grown on me like it's the usaa it was so bad and then it got worse and then it just it completely flipped the cycle i'm, I'm all in on that commercial busted. now busted <laughs> ah busted you got me i'm super bowl See, champion it's, right? it's fun yeah, it, i i know exactly what you're saying because it's so bad that you can actually enjoy Did they it hand if you him if the you lines just, right before if you just think He's adorable. Yes. Uh, well, hand, those are cue cards, man. Okay. Yeah, that's fair <laughs> enough. In too small a font. Gronk don't memorize. Yeah. That's not a teleprompter either. Someone is holding a <laughs> cue card old school. <laughs> All right. Well, we're done. No more. Busted. No more Al, Al talk. <laughs> we are done for today's episode. We'll be back on Thursday with a new one. And um, ultimatedraftkit.com. Make sure you get in on the giveaway before it's too late. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you next time. Busted. Goodbye. <laughs>you for listening to another episode of the fantasy footballers podcast join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on twitter at the ff ballers